everyone. Sunday night satsang with John and Michelle. Hi everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we love meeting up with you in this way on a, on a Sunday evening for satsang. It, uh, I think it brings a certain amount of closure to the weekend and we put ourselves in the right energy, the right vibration for the week ahead. You know, the whole universe works on vibration. Yeah. And Nicholas as Nicholas said, said, if you want to understand anything about the universe, look at vibration as first and foremost. Yeah. And um, these satsangs are designed to raise our vibrations, to bring us close into the frequency of love. Um, and from that space, we're then more intelligent, more able to make better decisions, choices in life. And as we vibrate at these um, more peaceful frequencies, let's put it that way, um, so the light within us ripples out to the light around us. And um, I'm sure each one of you, as you send to yourselves in this vibration of peace and love, um, you will positively influence the world around you, or you are positively influencing the world around you. And if you've had any experiences um, on that, you know, practicing uh, what is gained here during these satsangs, and if they've benefited you in any way in your lives, uh, just give us a note there. Yeah. Let us know what the experiences are for you from this. And please, if you can, um, help um, spread this um, through Facebook, press the like button and the share button. Uh, like and share and just spread it to your, to your friends. And it, it helps raise the ranking of that on Facebook. And then even more people see it. So, um, yeah. And then give us, uh, we like to get your comments. And uh, we like to know where you're from, where you're listening from. And we especially like getting your hearts. <laughs> so give those yeah, to us. Yeah. Flying up the screen. And just if you do, if, if our voices sort of go a bit funny or if the sound changes, please just send us a message and we'll see if we can adjust it because we had that situation a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks so ago it sounded it suddenly sound like, like we got we, colds. Yeah, it was terrible. And nobody said anything, yeah. so we were unaware. Yeah. So if we do, if our voices suddenly change, just let us know. Oh, hopefully we're sounding normal. Well, I don't know. We can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> we can't. But let's start as we always do, and that's by bringing ourselves into reality, into the present moment. And we do that by becoming aware of uh, what is here and now, and one of the things that's here and now is our body. And uh, the reason we practice that is because the body is a portal into pre presence. It's a portal into a connection with life because your body is animated by life and the more we connect with our bodies the more our awareness aligns with life itself and I know there are some people who would um, you know like to leave their body maybe float up into the top corner of the room maybe visit other dimensions um, and I would suggest that no one becomes enlightened that way mm -hmm. that we actually need to fully inhabit the body and accept the body and enlightenment or awakening happens through the body, not by, by trying to resist or push away from the body. So let's just gently close our eyes to start this evening's satsang and become aware of this incredible gift it is to have a body. And become aware of the life that animates your body. Become aware of the presence that is aware of the life that animates your body. So if you can, Simultaneously, feel the aliveness in you right now, in this moment. Simultaneously around your whole body. So yes, you can feel maybe where your hands are resting. You can feel where your feet are resting. You can feel where your body is situated, your bum may be on a chair. And maybe you have a backrest to support you. You can hear the sound of my voice. You can feel the temperature of the room on your cheeks. You can feel the in-breath and the out-breath, the so-called breath of life. And feel the aliveness right now in your body. You may Feel it as a tingling sensation. May 
feel it as a warmth inhabiting your whole body simultaneously right now. Feel the life that animates every single cell in your body. Right now, this energy of life is enabling you to listen. It enables you to hold your body in an upright position. It beats your heart. It digests your food. And it breathes you. Just connect your awareness fully with this energy called life. Feel it just under your skin, maybe, if you want. Under your arms, under your legs, your torso and your forehead, your scalp, back of your neck, your shoulders, down your back. Feel this aliveness in your body right now. Now take a deep breath in, pushing the air right out into your tummy so you're pushing your tummy out like a big ball big big ball and then a long releasing relaxing breath out to sigh every problem every challenge you have just let it go let it go let it go take another deep breath in you so you're pulling your diaphragm down pushing your stomach out taking the air right down to your to your feet and then a long long breath out just release all that no longer serves you in this moment just let it all go, let it all go. Take one. Last deep breath in, filling your tummy up. And then that beautiful, long, relaxing, surrendering breath out. Just release it, let it all go, let it all go. And now just allow this intelligence which we call life to breathe you. You don't need to do any doing now. You can just concentrate on being. And life will look after your heartbeat, it will look after your digestion, it will look after the transportation of the oxygen from your lungs, through all the veins and arteries, down to the tiny little capillaries, bathing and nurturing every single cell in your body. And bring your awareness to the faculty of listening. Bring your awareness to perhaps the faintest sound that you can hear right now. Where we are, we have quite a lot of wind this evening. There's a sound of some hardy dars in the background. See what your ears can pick up where you are. From your environment, see what's the softest, faintest sound. Listen very, very carefully. And as you listen, become aware of what listens. Your name doesn't listen. Your gender doesn't listen. Your age doesn't listen. Your career doesn't listen. Your education doesn't listen. What listens is awareness. And if you really listen to the softest sound that you can hear right now, you find you have to become very still inside, very quiet inside. And it is in fact stillness that listens. Align your awareness with that stillness because that stillness is your true essence. It's a stillness that underlies all your thoughts. It's a stillness that underlies all your emotions. It's a stillness that underlies all the words that you ever say. The stillness is your beingness. And in truth, you are a human being. So just for a few moments, settle your awareness fully into this beingness that animates your body, that beats your heart, that 
digests your food, that listens. Discover the depth of stillness within you right now. Notice that this stillness, this emptiness, doesn't have any desires. In fact, this stillness has no past. The stillness has no future, has no name, has no identity other than awareness itself. And this beingness, this life, is pure awareness, unconditioned awareness. And as we align our focus more with this, so we find a beautiful experience of peace arising within us. nothing to concern ourselves with, no worry, no anxiety, no guilt, no grief, no anger, no resentment. Just pure peace of this moment. And we start to realize that stillness is peace. And that in fact I am stillness, I am peace. Even in all my doingness, even in all my thinking, in all my action, underlying all of that, I am peace. I am stillness, I am awareness. And as this realization dawns in our consciousness, so we are able to access this, this stillness in the drama of life, in the ups and downs of life, in the challenges of life. We are, with one conscious breath, able to reconnect with this beingness within us. And as we bring our awareness into alignment with beingness, with stillness, so we find we are in a better position to take action. That the words no longer come from a story in our head, but they come from presence. They come from peace. And our actions and our words become instruments of peace in the world. Take a ni nice deep breath in, filling your tummy up like a big ball, and then a long out breath. Long out of breath. Just release. Just release. Let go. And when you're ready, you may open your eyes. And to see how you feel in this moment as you look around the room. To see how you feel. Just lovely. Thank you, John. <clears throat> Beautiful. Thank you for that. Thank you. Really how do you feel? Let us know how you feel. Give us some comments. Well, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us again on a Sunday evening. And we're going to be talking about the stories we tell and whether we should believe them or not. <laughs> so I think we all have those buzzing around in our heads quite often. And the theme for this month in astrology um, is really about that because it's on the, on the axis of Gemini, which is thoughts and stories. 
and um, Sagittarius, which is kind of the truth and higher knowledge and higher awareness and higher perspective. So very often while this is happening and while we've got the planetary alignments that we have at the moment, we often um, are shown our stories in Technicolor. So if stories have been coming up for you in terms of old patterns and old um, conditioned thoughts and old pain body stuff has been coming up to the surface, possibly it's a chance to heal it because we're heading for a very powerful time, which if you if you read anything online, you will have um, become aware of the upcoming date that everybody's kind of talking about and writing about, the 21st of December, because there's a major, major alignment, actually a few, there's a few things happening on that day, which is why everybody's um, writing about it. And one of the things is that um, we have what we call the Great Conjunction, which I'll speak about in a couple of weeks' time more. But the Great Conjunction is when Saturn and Jupiter come together, which they do once every 19 or 19.6 years, I think it is, so 19, 20 years, they come together. Um, and so it's, it's, it's something that doesn't happen very often, um, so it's every 20 years ago, but this was so, but this one is even more profound because for the first time in 800 years, they actually come together in an air sign. And the air, an air sign is about energy. So we are entering into a place and a stage and a cycle, if you like, which is going to last another 200 years with these air signs. Um, and then a couple of years' time, they'll be, uh, they'll be followed by Pluto. And it's going to be, a, that's generally associated with like a shift in consciousness, number one. A higher perspective hopefully and um, also just in terms of being able to be more conscious so it's about it's Aquarius is the sign that's going into is about consciousness about raising our consciousness so it's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out but we've got a couple of weeks left before this before this starts to happen so I kind of see it as a almost like not ne nothing's ever final but it's a it's it's a big clearing so if stuff is coming up for you and stories are coming up for you, um, rather than seeing it as a failure, as, well, you know, am I never going to get this? Rather see it as, a, as an opportunity to, to see them from a higher perspective so that you can see what they are. So that's my little tuppence worth for the yeah. astrology. Yeah, this year is really a year of clearing it clearing old patterns, past energy patterns that were lay, laying maybe dormant in our subconscious mind. Stuff that we thought we'd dealt with previously yeah. has been brought to the surface. And our fears, for example, that we thought we'd dealt with a long time ago is coming to the surface. And um, coming to the surface not to, not to show us that we failed yeah. <laughs> in our dealing with them, but just so that they can be healed one final time. And um, healing takes place through love. All healing is a return to love. And uh, the signposts that point us towards love is allowing, accepting, and appreciating. And the number one thing in your life, in our lives, which needs to be allowed, accepted, and appreciated for love to flow and for healing to take place is ourselves and so i would suggest that in the lead up to this um, transformation that uh, astrology is telling us about uh, we can focus more on allowing accepting and appreciating ourselves and as we do that for ourselves so we find we start to do that for others we start to allow accept and appreciate those around us far deeper, far more authentically than we have in the past. So we can use this time to open the portal within us for love to flow. Mm. And uh, just uh, as far as dates go, you know, I, I'm not a psychic, I don't see into the future. In fact, I don't live in the future. The future doesn't hold anything of any value for me. Um, I tend to live very much in the present moment. And um, so I, I don't really buy into dates. You know, many years ago, I used to do talks on the Mayan calendar. And back then, it was the 21st of December 2012 that everyone was talking about 
and the whole world was going to shift and change on yeah. the 21st of December 2012. And, um, you know, the, the Mayan elders that I um, were, was, were drawing on at the time uh, didn't speak about any date. In fact, they weren't fixed with dates at all. Um, the Western mind, we're very fixed with these linear chron chronological dates. And yet the elders in, in most indigenous uh, cultures, wisdom keepers, they don't really hold much with dates. Mm. Um, but there are cycles. There are this cycles. Is the end of a cycle. And I, I would suggest that we are shifting into what's called the fifth sun, mm. fifth world. Fifth and dimension. this is a, um, a level of greater connection, greater connection. Mm. And it's about a greater sense of community, mm. a greater sense of humanity, a greater sense of love. Mm. So whether it's a date on a calendar or not, I, I would urge yeah. us all to make this connection uh, now more than ever and to work on the self, reconnecting yeah. the self with love. Yeah. The way I see it is that it's a portal. So um, mm. when there's a, there's a specific alignment, because we're all connected, there are certain portals that happen. It's got nothing to do with necessarily a calendar date. It's got to do with an alignment that happens at a specific time, in, in, in a specific moment in time. So that's, for me, it's not an event uh, necessarily, although sometimes there can be events. Um, it's not specifically an event. I remember when I was doing 2012, the astrology then, I was also saying it probably isn't going to be an event. But it definitely is a portal, and it's a shift in possibly an awareness and in consciousness it's, it's ushering in a new cycle of awareness and that that i'm pretty sure it is doing that doesn't mean that everything magically changes overnight it means that a new cycle starts to actually open up that's the way i see it yeah yeah so we're closing down one cycle in a in a sense we're actually letting go of what we don't need from that cycle so we can move into a new cycle yeah yeah yeah. And, uh, you know, this year being 2020, it's 2020 vision. Mm. And I would suggest that uh, we can focus more purely um, or more intently on uh, what it is we really want to experience in the world. And that, I believe, is love. I believe is love. And so that brings us to the topic mm. for tonight, which is don't believe the story or don't believe the stories. Mm. And uh, I think it has uh, several different um, levels to it. Um, one of them is um, don't believe the story that we've been told on the outside. Don't believe the media, for example. Don't believe all that you read or all that you hear. And I think that's, that's very good advice. I question everything, I believe. And, you know, when I was uh, bringing up, up my kids many, many, many years ago, I said, here, yeah, this is what I believe. Um, but don't believe me. Question me. And I, I would say that's a very good philosophy to have in life. Question everything. So um, don't believe the story, you know, don't believe the media, don't believe those stories. And, and one reason for doing that, I believe, is that what is the primary um, purpose of media? It doesn't matter whether it's print media or radio or television. The primary purpose is not to inform you or to entertain you. That's not it's why the they're in business. It's to sell advertising space and to make a profit for the owners of the, that particular yeah. media. And um, in order to sell advertising space, you've got to make it worth the, the, the advertiser's while. And we know that a person who's calm and peaceful and centered um, actually doesn't consume very much, consumes very little in the world. But a person who's anxious and fearful uh, will consume far, far more. So this is known in the advertising world. So if you want to get someone to buy your product, you've got to make them feel less than. You've got to disconnect them. And so the media basically is a disconnection tool, disconnection from love, disconnection from peace. That's the primary purpose, so that you will be more susceptible to buying the particular product that's being advertised. I mean, that's the purpose of the media, is to sell product. Mm. And so when, when we say don't believe the story, I, I would um, seriously urge you to disconnect more from, from media, knowing that it is a means of communicating fear. And th if that isn't a vibration which you would like to carry predominantly within your awareness, then you need to unplug that. The same as, same as for example, if you are concerned about the health of your physical body, 
then I would suggest you need to unplug from fast food. You need to unplug from processed food and reconnect with the food that nature gives us, that God gives us, um, unprocessed by, um, by corporates, for example. So these are just obviously sensible things. And I would suggest that this is a time of moving more into the frequency of love and connection. And in order to do that, I think we need to assess our lives and say, which are the toxic relationships? relationships we have, which are the toxic media we have, mm -hmm. what's the toxic food we have, what's the, the cleaning products in our home. I mean, <laughs> we need to look at everything um, holistically, and that, that's at the exterior level. Mm -hmm. um, but more importantly than that are the stories that we tell ourselves. Yeah. And these are the stories that really run our lives, and that's what we want to have a look at tonight. Yeah. Those stories, um, I think we've mentioned before on this group, but I mean, some of you haven't been here. It's, it's very much like living with a roommate or a couple of roommates in your head. You know, at any one moment, we're actually having a full on conversation with these other voices in our heads that are telling us stories about all sorts of things that might or might not, might not happen in the future or may have happened in the past, and they have no real validity at all. But we really believe them. Yeah. So very often, we, or most often actually, when we're in the grip of them, we actually believe that they're true. And that's when the pain body gets triggered and when we get triggered. And so it's just to be very aware of when there's a story going on in the head, which is that, ex, that sort of roommate. I like the idea of a roommate because that's what it's like. It's like having this kind of troublesome roommate there that's always telling you these stories that don't make you feel good. Um, and it's to be aware of that of that so that we can and the only way we can be aware of that is when we bring ourselves into the present. Then you realise, oh hang on, this is a story. This isn't true. This isn't something that's actually happening right now. It's something I'm thinking about and worrying about or regretting from the past. So it's it's when we're out of alignment and we're actually going from either side, left or right, past or future. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. It's the stories we tell yeah. ourselves. And, and these roommates, uh, or roommate, um, many of us have quite a few roommates yeah. in the head. Yeah. Uh, the difference, uh, or the way to, to, to assess, is this a, a troublesome roommate in my head that's, that's coming up with the story, is the roommates will always judge. Mm. And they will judge others and they will judge you. So, you know, if you say to yourself, oh, I'm so stupid. Well, who's telling who they're stupid? I mean, you know, there's a conversation going on there. You know, you shouldn't have done that. And you should have said this. Who is the you that's talking here in your head? And that's the roommate that Michelle's uh, talking about there. It's a good that's... question to ask, though. Who is the who that's talking in your head? <laughs> Right, yeah. Who are you having a conversation with? And, and, and these um, alter egos that you have, because that's what they are, they will always criticize and always judge. And if you would like to walk a path that is more peaceful, that is more connected, more loving, more serving, then a couple of things that one needs to discard is the judgment and the criticism. Those are things that don't serve you at all. They will never get you what you really want in, in life. Uh, the, all they do, judgment and criticism, what they do do, though, is they make your egoic um, identity stronger. Yeah. They give you a, a greater sense of who I am. The problem with that is that it's, uh, it's an illusion because you're not that. And with every illusion that you create, there's always a downside, which is called disillusionment. And uh, the, the um, net result of all endings of illusions or disillusionments is pain and suffering. So if you would like to end the cycles of pain and suffering in your life, then I would suggest um, that criticism and judgment are two things that we need to, to drop, drop from our, our awareness. And love doesn't have any criticism. Love has no judgment. Love is a state of allowing, accepting, and appreciation. If you can just remember those three. And uh, the, 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 the one you need to focus on the most, first of all, is yourself. Appreciate, accept, and allow yourself to be. And it's the stories you tell yourself that actually move you away from love. The stories you're telling yourself. 
And the first step in healing the stories you're telling yourself is to become aware that you are telling yourself stories. Because most people are not even aware that they are stories. They have no idea. They think it's, it's a reality. And uh, I absolutely guarantee you that if you have a twin, identical twin, and you were both brought up in the same environment, had the same childhood, and, and, and lived a similar life, that your story would be different to your twin story. Mm. Absolutely guaranteed. Mm. And then you start to realize, well, every story is a subjective story. And it's my story that I'm carrying around with me. Does it serve me to have this story? Does this story that I'm telling myself in this moment take me closer to love? Or is it a story based on, on fear? And fear is false evidence of fear. Mm. This puts a little bit of distance between the... Um, what's going on and so they should say you're in a in a an agree a disagreement or you're in an argument with someone or you're have it, having a disagreement or um, different opinion um, or something is happening inside you as a result of what somebody else has done one of the ways that you can actually get a bit of distance um, into that is to say the story I'm telling myself is and that's something that you can do with another person if that person's conscious enough so the story i'm telling myself is that you're thinking this that and that about me because it opens up a dialogue and the person can then say no well i'm not actually thinking about that at all or um no and it's, it opens up a discussion because otherwise what happens is you tell that story and that becomes another story and another story and another story and by the time it's built up into a huge story it's often some kind of explosive so it's just a way of actually um yeah just communicating the story i'm telling myself is so you can actually if you find yourself caught up in the story the story i'm telling myself is what am i telling myself here and then you can say is it true um do i really know that this story is true and then there's a distance between yeah. you and the story and that's consciousness that's awareness that's the starting point yeah. of it, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah. And um, the sort of the experience of being human is a feeling experience, is it not? I mean, most of life that we assess is, is, is actually feeling. Is it a good feeling or is it a feeling we don't want? And so one of the ways of assessing uh, or becoming aware of the stories you tell yourself is how am I feeling in this moment? How am I feeling? Now, in truth, you are, as we went into in the opening meditation, those of you who were here early on, would have discovered that when you didn't have a story in your head, when you didn't have a past or a future in your head, when you didn't have an identity, when you didn't even have a name, you were peace, you were stillness, you were emptiness. Now, that is your true essence. Your true essence is peace. And in that there is love. And so if you're not feeling that, then there is something disconnecting you from who you really are. And that something isn't something outside of yourself. It's actually a story you're telling yourself about the world outside of yourself. And it's to realize that it's a story that robs you of peace, not actual, not the physical world that's robbing you of peace. It's what you're telling yourself. So for example, I mean, if you're in a conversation, and someone is speaking to you, they say X, Y, Z. That gets filtered through a story in your head, and it comes out as P, Q, S or something, completely different to what they were actually trying to communicate to you. And so I would suggest if you want peace, if you would like a greater sense of centeredness in your life, um, equanimity, um, love, joy, then... Um, one needs to distance yourself from these stories. And some of these stories are very, very entrenched stories. They're stories you've been telling yourself for a long, long, long time. Well, you've been told. Yeah, and we bought into those stories. stories we were told that told. and there was a hook within us. Mm -hmm. um, if you didn't have a hook, you know, if you walk mm -hmm. down the road and some drunken guy on the pavement screams at you and insults you and says, you know, you are stupid, you know, mm -hmm. you brush it off. You, you carry on walking. You don't take it seriously. But if someone you care about or someone yep. you respect says you're stupid, you know, you're going to have a hook there and you're going to carry that. So it's not actually the words of you are stupid no. that's the problem. It's whether you buy into it or not. That is the problem, whether you buy into it. 
and uh, some of the things that have been said in, to us in our lives that we've bought into don't serve us at all. They don't take us closer into, into peace and right, centeredness right. at all. Why do we carry them? We carry them because we don't feel we deserve love. We feel at a deep level that we have done something that has disconnected us from the divine, disconnected us from peace. And I, I would say that is just an absolute er erroneous belief. Um, nothing could separate you from, from love. Nothing could separate you from unconditional mm -hmm. acceptance because that's who you are. you made in the image and similitude of the divine. You're not being made. You're not in process of being made. You're not going to be made one day. You are already it. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that blocks you from that are these stories that we're telling ourselves in the mind that we have we carried over from our parents, maybe our grandparents. We've carried over from our our spouse, our ex-spouse, whatever. Um, we have told ourselves these stories. And I, I would just suggest that the first step is to become aware that you are telling yourself a story. Because if you're, not, if you're not aware of that, then you're completely immersed in the story and you don't even know there's a story going on. You think it's reality going on. The first step, though, is to stand back. As Michelle said, you give yourself a little bit of distance between your, aware, between your awareness and the actual story you're telling yourself. The moment you can look at your story, you're then um, empowered enough to dissolve that story. You're empowered to say, is that a story that ser ser serves me in this moment? Does the story I'm telling myself take me closer to love or further away from love? And once you see that, you are then awake. You, and, and awakened living is, is a person who's empowered to make new choices in life. Not choices based on old experiences, but new choices based on actualities, based on presence, based on what it is you now want in your life. Mm. And that's, a, that's, a, that's a, um, a great opportunity to shift. And I, I believe these energies that we're going through at the moment, particularly with this alignment on the 21st, mm. it makes it easier for us to do this work. Not harder, it makes it easier. The world on the outside might be getting more challenging. Yeah, maybe getting very challenging on the outside. But in that, it makes it easier for us to see what works and what doesn't work. And uh, I think that uh, that is the gift of, of the times that we're going through now. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, and I, th it, I mean, that is the shift, really. That's the, it's the consciousness, I think. I've you there for a few moments. My phone is phone just... went a little strange. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry let us that. know if you can still hear us. Is Mercury red? red no, red it has, we can't even blame it on no, that. We can't blame it on that. <laughs> Nobody's um, saying anything. Okay, well, there's a bit of a delay. Okay. Anyway, we're back with you. And um, so, um, mm. just to come back to what we were saying, is awareness creates empowerment. Awareness creates empowerment. Yeah. So, the more aware we become of the stories we're telling ourselves, um, the more empowered we are to choose a new fulfilled future for ourselves to experience. Yeah. And I think that's quite, that's quite important. Absolutely. That is quite important, yeah. I think we should... No, it's fine. Sorry, if, if we get cut off again, um, the phone is just coming up and telling us that we, the memory on the phone is almost full. And um, I think one way of deleting memory is to come into presence, but my phone doesn't understand presence. <laughs> so it's got a big sign saying. So we might have to cut uh, this a bit files. short. Yeah. I think maybe it's a good idea because yeah. it's um, yeah. it we doesn't do have much more time left. Okay. So why don't we go into a nice centering meditation? I think so. Should I think we do so. that? If 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 right. we sort of leave while it's happening, then yeah. we know why. So we don't just disappear. And and just to let you know that uh, this this space of empowerment that we went into in the opening meditation is your inner space. And we have an ongoing platform called Inner Space and you're welcome to join. We've now, we've, we, it's just a monthly platform. And this month in December, we're looking more deeply at the subject of truth. Mm. And uh, what it mm. consists of is a couple of Zoom meetings and also uh, journal work and a meditation and affirmations. So you're welcome to go to journeysofawakening.com and look at under the, t under the menu tab, Inner Space and go and take a look. And uh, join us. It's, uh, it's, a it's a community. It's a community to guide and help and support you as we go through these massive transformation processes that the earth is going through at the moment.
Yeah. So you're welcome to join us there. So let's ask for a okay. nice guided meditation right, to center us. So take us out of our please. stories. Yes. All right. So just um, deep breath in. Hopefully you can all hear us still. And a releasing breath out. Let's take another beautiful, big, slow breath in. All the way in. All the way in. And hold for a few seconds and then let it all out. You can even sigh it out. Just sigh out all those stories. All those thoughts. Breathe them in again. Deep, beautiful, slow breath in. And just sigh out all those worries and fears and anxieties. Bring yourself back to your breath. But just allow your breath to just flow naturally. No forcing, no trying to make anything happen. Just coming in and exhaling at its own time, own pace. Bring yourself into presence. Just being present with each breath. Notice how it enters in through your nostrils and how it exits through your mouth or your nose. Just this breath. And as you're focusing on your breath, you might find that a thought arises. Just imagine a beautiful cloudy sky. Imagine that those thoughts are clouds. And just let them pass by. And then return to your breath again. Just breathing in and out. With each out breath softening the body. Any thoughts that arise, just bring it back to the breath. Now imagine a beautiful rainbow colored light coming in through the top of your head and pouring down through your body, washing away whatever is no longer necessary, clearing out a space. Imagine that light permeating all the way down through the top of your head, down through your neck, into your shoulders, all the way down into your torso, into your hips, down into your legs, knees, into your feet and into the ground. Beautiful rainbow colored light. Now allow that light to broaden and expand. So it's almost a sort of a tube of rainbow colored light. And it's filling all the way you. Let that tube grow even further, even wider, so that you're eventually encased in this beautiful rainbow colored tube of light, which goes way up above your head and goes into the earth way down beneath your feet. It doesn't have any boundaries, it just keeps on going. But there's a beautiful feeling of being contained and supported. So just allow that to hold you in this space. In the space of love. In the space of peace. In this present moment. Allowing that light to wash away anything that you don't need through the bottoms of your feet. Just release it into the earth. Now 
Now take your attention to your heart. Really infuse your heart with this rainbow energy. Imagine a beautiful flame of rainbow light, rainbow colored light inside your heart. And now imagine that flame getting a little bit bigger as you blow gently into it. An intention for the week. Set an intention for yourself for this week. Blow that into that little flame which is sitting inside your heart and let it expand outwards. So that it, it ignites and expands the column of rainbow colored light that you're standing in or sitting in. Just keep that intention with you for the week. Maybe align with that in your early morning meditation or before you go to sleep. And let that set the trajectory for each day. And now take a deep, beautiful breath in. And a relaxing, releasing breath out. And when you're ready, you can gently open your eyes. Mm, that was beautiful. Good. Beautiful, thank you. Wasn't that lovely? Wasn't Good. that beautiful? Everybody's well, the still phone here. is still working, so... I don't know if anybody's still here, but we think you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's have an affirmation for the week. We'll draw an affirmation. That's Michelle's chance to choose uh, tonight. So Close my eyes. Lovely violet one. Lovely violet mm. color. This is lovely. It says, I am stillness, and I radiate peace into the world. That's actually yeah, a favorite one of mine. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's really nice. I'll yeah. put it up now Goes below. My top. I am stillness. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? Oh, lovely. Yeah, bright color. Hey? <laughs> <laughs> I am stillness and I radiate peace into the world. And that's what we were speaking about, uh, about earlier. Dropping the stories, realizing you are the stillness, and allowing your true essence to radiate into the world. What the world needs now is not more anxiety, not more fear. It needs more peace, more love, more yeah. connection not disconnection. And uh, let's take the words of Mahatma Gandhi, you've got to be the change you desire to see in the world. So let us be more peace, let us be more loving, more compassionate, more empathetic, more connected. Um, and uh, I think that will bode well for the transformation that we're going through in the situations and Me circumstances. Too. Just remember, in the center of the storm, there's always stillness. Right in the middle. And if you are centered, no matter what's happening around you, you will go through this time of transformation peacefully. So bless you. Thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, we love you all. We really, really do. And um, we look forward to meeting up with you. Well, those of you who are um, mm. going to join on mm. Sunday. Sunday. Mm -hmm. yeah, tomorrow night we have, a, have one of our groups going. Otherwise, we'll see you next Sunday night for... Sunday satsang with John and Michelle, mm. and I'll see that I empty some of the information on my on my <laughs> phone so it doesn't tell us that uh, the storage is full. That's <laughs> yeah. about to delete everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, okay. everyone. Bless you all. Have a Sleep good week. Tight. Sleep tight. Good week further. Tight. Yeah.